I feel particularly moved by the fact that you're here and that we're having this dialogue. I want to thank you for this. This is how we should be doing it. Not through distorted lenses, but through direct dialogue. Sir, let me say to you that just like you in 2010, people like me, myself, and many colleagues of mine who are now in government, were on the streets of Athens protesting the bailout. Why? Why were we protesting the bailout? I could show you articles of mine. I was saying that it was a scandal that given that the Greek debt had become unsustainable, by the way, that was all private debt. Debt, private. It was pu public debt, but owed to the banks, to private banks, Greek banks, English banks, German banks. Hmm? And suddenly it became unsustainable. We could not service it. That's what bankruptcy means for a state, insolvency. Hmm? What did the powers that be do? The Greek government. I was very cross with the Greek government, which was led by somebody that I was very friendly to, by the way. George Papandreou. I was very angry with that government. I was very angry with the IMF. I was very angry with your government. I was very angry with Europe. Why? Because we were misleading the Greek people and we were misleading the German people. We were saying to them, and I think we agree on this from what you said, we were saying to them that here we have an insolvency of the Greek state and we're going to deal with it by loaning the largest amount of money ever loaned in history to an insolvent state on condition of austerity that reduces the income from which the new loans and the old loans would have to be repaid. And my point was, this is a huge mistake from a European perspective because we are lying to our German friends and we are lying to ourselves thinking that we can get out of this and repay our debts. So, this is the kind of government you have in Athens now. You have a government comprising politicians, I, well, I, mean, I wasn't a politician then, I only became one five months ago, but comprising people who were against this loan from the German taxpayer. We thought that that was fraudulent. We should never have borrowed that money from the German taxpayer. And not only for the German taxpayer, but from the Slovak taxpayer who is poorer than the average Greek. From the Portuguese taxpayer, from the Irish taxpayer, from the French, the, uh, even the Slovenian taxpayer. And we were against this. We were saying, well, we suffered a major disaster. We have to deal with it. We have to restructure our debt. We have to have a deal with the banks. It's the, 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 our European taxpayer friends should not be involved in this. And what I'm doing now as minister is to say, okay, we have this debt now. We're, I'm not responsible for it. My government is not responsible for it. We are out on the streets demonstrating against it. But now we have it. How can we pay the most back to you, to your taxpayers? That is the question. And the answer is by growing. Now, if I accept what the institutions are asking me to accept, which is primary surpluses of 3.5%, 4%, whatever, you know, 25 next year, we are going to simply not grow enough to pay you back. This is why I do not want to be yet another Greek minister who makes promises knowing that he cannot fulfill them. And I think that you and I are allies in this. And forget that you are a Christian Democrat and I am a crazy lefty. Forget that. <laughs> we are Europeans who should have an alliance on the basis of logic about this. Looking after our taxpayers, your taxpayers and my taxpayers. On the question of... Um, you mentioned the question about the ESM. This, this is not a trick. What we're saying is, you know, I owe money to the ECB as the Minister of Finance next month. Now, I can't repay this. Everybody knows I can't repay it. I don't have it. So where do I borrow it from? From you? From your taxpayers? Again, next month? In order to pay the ECB? All right, let's say I do. But then that makes it harder for me to get back into the markets so that I can borrow more money to pay you back. This is why we're, the proposal is on the table, that we should shift that loan from the ECB to the ESM simply to make it more long dated, to link it to our growth rates, not because I want to defraud you and your taxpayers, but because I want to grow faster so as to be able to repay you. And that is a, pr a project that we should sit down and agree on together. 
if you want your taxpayers to be paid, which is what, what we want, because we're a proud people, like your people are proud. We don't like ha having debts that we don't repay. But at the moment, our economy has shrunk so much, we can simply not find the 312 billion that we owe. I'm not recommending that we shouldn't. All I'm saying is, help us grow so that we can repay. This is what the union is. As far as your point, sir, is concerned, I agree with you. We are a union of social values. We should be in this together. I do believe that every nation in Europe should become more German, like Germany should become more Southern, more Mediterranean. This is the whole point about the melting pot. It's a, the whole point about getting closer together. One difficulty about all of us becoming German is that we can't all have a trade surplus unless we manage to d discover ways of exporting to the universe. What we need... <laughs> Germany is always going to be a surplus country because you have this magnificent industry and you should be very proud of it. But we should all get together and find ways in which your surpluses can then fund investment projects in Italy, in Greece, in uh, wherever, in the, the whole of Europe, from which the Germans benefit, and which are sustainable, and don't create bubbles which then burst, creating problems for your taxpayers, my taxpayers, the whole of Europe. 